I sometimes joke that it was because I was wedged between four brothers, two older and two younger, that I had to assert my sense of equality and fairness. I also watched my father as a doctor, and he was an old-style doctor who really cared about his patients and who slowed his speech and leant over to hear somebody who wasn't able to articulate very well. And I understood that everybody matters, even if they're very poor. And then an aunt of mine who was working in India sent back pictures of great poverty and some conflict. And then I started to study law, and it all came together, that law could be an instrument for social justice. But as far back as I can remember, I had this kind of inner sense of justice, of fairness, and it still motivates me, I must say. What Eleanor Roosevelt said, that if human rights are to matter at all, they must matter in small places close to home, so small that you cannot find them in any maps of the world. Right. And that idea of so small that you cannot find them in any maps of the world um, touched me, because I could imagine uh, the places that I now have been to many times, where you have conflict and no hope and no facilities and people feeling completely invisible mm. and the need to ensure that they are respected and they have a place at the table. Now, because of the uh, opportunities that I've had as UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and when I was president going to Rwanda after the genocide and killing and uh, to Somalia before that, I have images that are just a few inches below my consciousness that I can evoke at any stage. So I have um, a huge number of images of uh, real suffering, real um, unacceptable um, uh, travesties of human rights. Uh, I was recently in Gaza uh, where you have collective punishment and those images of the women in particular that I was meeting because we were focusing on women and their families. Uh, poor farming women from um, Bet Hanun who couldn't farm their land because it had been bulldozed to create a, a no-man zone um, for security reasons, but it was a very, very wide area that seemed unnecessarily cruel. And because of the siege, they were not getting any other means of earning their living. Their children were not having enough to eat. Their schooling had gone down. Um, if there was a serious health emergency, people died trying to get out for the health relief. And all of that uh, was very harrowing. A year ago I was in eastern Chad on the border of Darfur and we were talking again to women who had fled with their family, those that survived across the border into Chad, but also internally displaced. And the complete dislocation of being a refugee, even for the children. It's not like a normal life and yet we consign so many people in a forgotten way and we don't care enough. So again it's that inner sense of, of justice and fairness, I think, that, that drives me. And I hope I always will have that.